Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leet Code called the range sum of BST. Now this is a really fun problem. So what is it asking? Given the root node of a binary search tree and two integers low and high, return the sum of values of all nodes with a value in the inclusive range low to high. So we're given a binary search tree and remember a BST is just a special form of tree in which all the values to the left of a node are going to be less than that node's value and everything to the right is going to be greater than that node's value. And this is going to apply for every single node in that tree. If we look at example one, our root node is 10. This entire left subtree has to have values less than 10 and the entire right subtree has to have values that are greater than 10. Now, if we go to five, the same thing still applies. We have to have values less than five to the left and greater than five to the right. But that doesn't mean we can put any value greater than five to the right because this entire tree is still the left subtree of our root node 10. So yes, anything to the right here has to be greater than five, but it still has to be less than 10. So we're introducing a sort of range bound. Anything to the right here has to be greater than five and less than 10. And as we go down deeper in our binary search tree, the range bounds for those nodes are just going to get more narrow. Case in point, if we look at example two, it's the same exact thing as example one with a couple more nodes attached to the bottom. So if we had our same path over here, we went from 10 to five to seven. What are the ranges going to be for seven's child nodes? If we go to the right, we need to be greater than five and greater than seven, which means of course we just need to be greater than seven and that's automatically going to fulfill this criteria. And we still need to be less than 10. Now, if you go to the left, we need to be less than seven, but still greater than five. And the only possibility for that was six. So now that we've recapped what a binary search tree is and how the ranges for the nodes work, Maybe we can use that to our advantage because remember, we want to find all the values within an inclusive range. So if we look at example one again, right, we have our root node 10 over here and our low and high are seven and 15 respectively, which means this is the range that we want to stay in. We're gonna start off with our root node and we know that it is within this range, right? So we want to include this value in our total sum. We want to include 10. Now, since 10 is within our range, we really can't make a claim for whether or not the left children or the right children are going to be in range or not. So we need to actually search through both of them. Say we go down the left first. So we're at node five. We want to see if it's in range. Five obviously is not in our range. Our range was from seven to 15. So any number higher than the high or lower than the low is not going to be within that range. Since five isn't in that range, it's lower than the range we want, we need to find numbers that are greater than it. And we know all the greater numbers of a node will lie to the right of it. So we're going to check the right tree of five and not even bother with the left. Our own node wasn't in that range. It was too low. So any number to the left is also going to be even lower. So since we're only checking the right, we would now be at node seven. We see that we are within range. It's an inclusive range. So we're going to take seven and add that to our running sum. Now, since we are within bounds, we want to check both left and right children of seven, but they don't exist, meaning they're essentially zero for our purposes. And so we can go back up because we know we've finished searching in the left subtree of 10, but we still had to search in the right side. So checking the right, we are at 15. It's not higher than our high. It's exactly that number. It's within our range that we want. So we also want to include 15 in our total sum. Now there's nothing on the left for us to check with 15, but there is something on the right. So going to the right node, we see that it is higher than our highest point we could go to and it's not in bounds. So we need to search for something smaller, but there's nothing on the left over here. So we return and our end answer would just be 10 plus seven plus 15, which is 32. And this is all the logic that we need in order to solve this. So how do we actually go ahead and code this up? To code this up, we know we want to go down all the nodes in our binary search tree, which means this is a depth first search. And this is almost always done through recursion. Now with a recursive solution, we need two things, our base case and our recursive case. What is our base case going to be? When do we actually stop searching? Well, that's going to be if we don't have any more nodes to actually go through, right? If we have no children, if we have no nodes, we just want to stop and return. 
So if not root, if it does not exist, we want to return. And do we want to return anything special? Well, we see in our output, it's just going to be a sum of value. So it's going to be an integer. So we actually want to return zero. We're not adding anything to our running sum. Now, when do we actually want to continue searching and recursing? Well, if our root.val, if this value is greater than the high, so root.val is greater than the high bound that we have, we know our root node's value is not within the range and we only want to search in the left. We only want nodes less than us in case they might be within our bounds. So in this case, we are going to call range sum again. So sum bst with root.left and the same low and high. Now, if this is not the case, say we have the other problem, right? If our roots value is actually out of bounds on the low side. So l if root.val is less than low, then we only want to search for values greater. So we only want to look in the right side of our node wherever we are. So we're going to call self.range sum bst with root dot right low and high. Else, our final case, if we are not higher than high or lower than low, meaning we are within our bounds, we want to add our own node's value to a sum. So we are going to return root dot val plus whatever we get searching in both our left and right subtrees. So plus self dot range sum BST with root dot left low high plus self dot range sum BST with root dot right low and high. And actually this should also be a return here. We're just returning the value we get. So let's go ahead and submit this and it is accepted. Now talking about space and time complexity for a time, even though we are potentially making an optimization in not looking through an entire subtree, if it is not within bounds, worst case scenario, every single node is within our bounds. So we're actually going to have to go through every single node. Meaning if we have n nodes, our time complexity is going to be O of n. And same with our space. Say we just have only left children all the way through in our binary search tree and they're all within bounds. Our call stack is going to be as far deep as the number of nodes in our tree. So this is also going to be O of n. Now, before leaving, let's just quickly do a walkthrough of our code with this input example, just to make sure we truly understand exactly what's happening. So we are passing into range some BST, our root node nine, low 13 and high 26. How are we solving this? We're just going line by line. So if not root, that's not true. Our root does exist. So we're going to go in this if condition, if root dot val greater than high, nine is not greater than high. So it's not out of bounds, at least on the high side, which means we can't go in this if condition. We're going to check this one here, root dot val less than low. That is true, right? Nine is less than 13, which means we're not within this inclusive range that we need to be in. So we only want to search for values greater than our node's value, which means we're going to be calling range sum BST with our right node, which means we are now going to be passing in 20 and low and high are just going to stay the same at 13 and 26. So now once we go back in this function, our root is now 20, low is 13 and high is 26. We just go through the lines again. So if not root, that's not true. Root does exist. It's 20. If root dot val greater than high, that's not true. Root is not greater than high. So we go in here, root dot val less than low. That's also not true. 20 is not less than 13, which means we're going to be going in this else condition where we're going to return root dot val. So 20 plus whatever we get from our left subtree. So self dot range sum of root dot left, which is 15 low, which is going to say 13 and high, which is going to remain 26. So whatever we get from here, plus whatever we get from our right tree. So self dot range sum BSC root dot right, which is 25 low 13 and then high 26. And remember, we always read left to right. So we're going to be solving for this first, passing in root to be 15 low to be 13 high to be 26. If not root, that's not true. It does exist. If root dot val greater than high, that's not true. 15 is not greater than 26. Elif root dot val less than low. That's not true. Root is not less than low. So we go in this else again, which means we are going to return root dot val, which is 15 
plus self.range some BST of root.left. It doesn't exist, so that's going to be none. And same thing for our root.right. It also does not exist, so it's going to be none. So solving for this first, we go back in our function. And this time, this if condition is going to be true. If not root, we want to return zero. Root does not exist, right? So we're just going to return zero to our caller. And this was called from this function over here. So we're going to return zero. And this is also going to return out zero. This node does not exist, which means we can actually evaluate 15 plus zero plus zero, which comes out to be 15. And so we are going to return 15 to our caller. And that had come from this statement over here when we were solving for this. So we're going to return 15, which means we just finished searching in the left of node 20. And we still have to search in the right. So we still have to make this call over here. So calling this again, now our root node is going to be 25. Low is 13, high is 26. If not root, that's not true. If root.val greater than high, that's not true. It's within our high. And if root.val less than low, also not true. 25 is not less than 13. So we're going to go in here, which means we're going to return 25 plus what we get from our left child. Our left child is going to be none. And what we get from our right. So that is going to be another call with 30. Solving for this first, we know this is none. So this is going to return out zero over here. And now calling this with root being 30, if not root, we return zero. It's not true. If root.val greater than high, this is true, right? Root.val is greater than 26. So we're going to return self.range sum with root.left low and high, meaning we're not going to bother checking anything in the right because those values are only going to be even greater. Now, the left child of 30 does not exist. It is none. So if we were to call this again with none, we would just return zero. So we return zero out to our caller, which was called from this. And we can finally evaluate this over here, which is just going to be 25, which means the sum of all the nodes of our subtree starting at 25 is just going to be 25. Nothing else besides this node is in our range. And we just return this to our caller, which came from here. So at this point, we can actually evaluate what this is. This is going to be 60. So we go ahead and return. And we return that to our caller, which was the original call we had actually made. So our final output is going to be 60. And that makes sense, right? Between the bounds 13 to 26, we only have three nodes that fit that criteria, 20, 15, and 25. So that is what we are going to return. So we just went ahead and solved the range sum of BST, and we did a complete walkthrough of our code with an example. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. If this video was helpful, like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next video.